it's time to take your footage from dull to dramatic by learning how to color grade in Premiere Pro. Knowing how to color correct your footage and then how to create amazing looks through color grading are two of the most powerful skills a content creator can learn. Hey, I'm Tom Graham for Envato Tuts Plus and in this tutorial, I'm going to take you through absolutely everything I can think of that you need to know when it comes to color grading your footage using the Lumetri Color Effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. Together, we'll look at the theory behind color correction and color grading, and then we'll jump into Premiere to learn how to correct our footage from scratch, as well as by using LUTs design for both correction and color grading. We'll look at scopes, we'll talk skin tone, we'll correct, we'll grade, and then at the end of this course, you'll walk away with all the tools that you need to get stuck into some fantastic color grading of your own, because after all, you're here to take your editing skills to the next level, right? You know what else is going to help you take your editing skills to the next level? A subscription to Envato Elements, which is an amazing resource where you can find millions of high quality creative assets, including video templates, stock footage, music, sound effects, and much more. With Envato Elements, you can add professional touches to your videos and create exciting edits with ease. So don't wait any longer, click the link in the video description below and check out Envato Elements today. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Now grab a notebook because it's time to get into Premiere Pro. There's gonna be plenty of information in this course, so I've gone through and I've left a detailed list of time-coded jumps down in the description. So if you do wanna jump forward to things like LUTs or scopes or cinematic looks, feel free to do that. But like a regular course, I'm going to break this down into chapters. So as you learn different parts of the process, they'll start to kind of build on top of each other and form a bigger picture. All right, let's get started for real. First up, we're talking about color correction. So to kick this whole course off, we first need to talk about the difference between color correction and color grading. Well, color correction, as the name alludes to, is the process of correcting an image that has been captured in camera in preparation for grading or correcting it to bring it in line with standard color spaces, for example, Rec. 709. Now, why do we need to correct images? Shouldn't our camera just do this for us if we've set it up correctly? Well, not necessarily. When a modern digital cinema camera, or even many prosumer mirrorless cameras, well, when they capture an image, they will often capture that directly from the sensor with little post-processing in what is known as logarithmic footage, or log for short. Put simply, log footage is a flat image that is baking more details into the highlights, midtones, and shadows without applying any camera image correction, like contrast or saturation. Log footage isn't intended to be displayed as a finished file though. It's designed in a way that captures the most data and allows for the most freedom when it comes to color correction and grading. There is of course raw footage as well, which funnily enough is not actually footage, it's the pure data taken directly from the sensor before it's even converted to a video format. This is designed to give the ultimate freedom of movement in post-production as nothing is baked into the footage. Whereas with log footage, although we still have a huge amount of control and plenty of data to play with, we still will be locked into the codec that it was captured in and other things will be baked into the image as well, like white balance, for example. For the purpose of this course, we'll focus on working with log footage as it's a much more common file type and it's more likely that you'll be working in this format. So color correction is the process of taking that flat log footage and manipulating things like exposure, contrast, saturation, as well as white balance and tint adjustments. And the purpose of correction is to bring the image back from that flat capture format to something that more closely reflects the world around us. Color grading, on the other hand, is the process of taking that corrected footage and then adding specific looks to the footage through the use of different grading techniques. We may still be changing the same parameters that we've done in the correction phase, like contrast and saturation, but in the color grading phase, we'll be looking more specifically at manipulating the colors within the image to achieve different results. These outcomes will be determined by things like location, the dynamic of the scene, the emotion of the characters, and things of that nature. Now, you may have also heard of LUTs before, and if you've been on Envato Elements, you'll know that they have a huge library of creative LUTs that are available to download and use on your footage to achieve strikingly different looks. But what is a LUT? Well, the word LUT is actually an acronym for lookup table, which at its core can be a quite complex scientific process to unpack, but on the surface, it's effectively a photo filter that can be applied over the top of your image to achieve different results. There are many types of LUTs and they aren't always just for grading. There are a number of specific manufacturer correction LUTs, which are designed to take log footage from certain cameras and bring them into specific color spaces. So for instance, I currently work with the Sony FX30 mirrorless camera, which I'm shooting on right now, and I shoot in Sony S-Log3 Cine. 
So when correcting my images, I use the Sony S-Log3 Cine to Rec. 709 correction LUT as my starting point for all of my correction and grading. Now these correction LUTs are designed to get the image into a ballpark space, but obviously every shot will be a little different, it won't be perfectly exposed, the white balance might be off, and the tint may need further adjustments, and so on and so forth. So LUTs are really helpful for this process, but they aren't the be all and end all. You first must know the fundamentals of how to correct and grade an image to best know how to utilize your LUTs. They are at the end of the day, just another set of tools for the job. Now, speaking of tools for the job, what a great segue into talking about another set of invaluable tools when it comes to color correction and grading. That's right, we're talking about scopes. Scopes may look really overwhelming and almost like a foreign language, but don't worry, you don't need to be too intimidated by them. By the end of this chapter, I'll show you which scopes to pay attention to, how to read them, and better yet, how to use them to your advantage when creating your looks. Importantly though, why do we use scopes? Well, simply put, we can't trust our eyes and we can't trust our monitors. Scopes are there to represent the data in the file in a consistent, objective way, and that's why it's really important to understand what we're looking at with the information that's displayed on the variety of scopes that are available in Premiere Pro and other grading programs. Now, think about it. If you're creating content on a specific display and it looks good to your eye, then that's totally okay if you're only ever going to display that image on this monitor. However, as soon as you export that piece of footage and upload it to YouTube or elsewhere, then you lose all control over where that image is going to be displayed. And each monitor will handle and present the image slightly differently. So to get a consistent, objectively correct image, you need to use scopes in order to help you get there. So what are some common scopes? Well, in the Lumetri panel here in Premiere Pro, you have access to four scopes, the Waveform, Parade, Histogram, and Vectorscope. And all of these have slight variance on what they display as well, depending on what your preference is. The waveform monitor is a tool that displays the luminance levels of your footage in a graph format. It helps to ensure that the image is properly exposed and that highlights and shadows are within the desired range. The parade scope is similar to the waveform monitor, but it separates the red, green, and blue channels and it displays them in separate graphs. This allows for more precise color correction and balancing. The histogram is a graphic representation of the tonal values of your image, so it plots the darker tones on the left, the midtones in the middle, and the highlights on the right. And you can see here it kind of represents the colour in the image as well as the overall luminance. You'll be familiar with this scope if you're a photographer. The vector scope is a tool that displays the saturation levels within the footage in a polar coordinate format. It's used to measure and adjust the colour balance and saturation of your footage. It also helps to ensure that colors are within a desired range and that they are not too oversaturated or undersaturated. Basically, the closer that the data is clustered to the center of the scope will result in the image having less color and less saturation. And as the colors become more saturated, they expand outwards towards their respective position on the color wheel. The vector scope also has a handy skin tone indicator, which we'll discuss very shortly. Now, if I could only pick two to learn from, then I would highly suggest that you select the parade and vector scope Using these two scopes in conjunction with one another allows you to not only look at the exposure and contrast of an image, but it also allows you to balance the color, be that temperature and tint, and this is via the parade, and then also to balance the saturation of the image, and more importantly, the skin tone of your subject via the vector scope. We're really close to being able to jump into Premiere Pro now and start learning some color grading and color correction techniques. But the last thing I do want to explain is skin tone, as it often gets overlooked and it's really an important part and a sometimes misunderstood part of the puzzle. So the vector scope here has a skin tone indicator which you can see represented by this line. In short, you want the skin tone of your subject to fall either on this line or slightly to the right of the line. Skin inherently has a lot of red in it and this line is the border between red and yellow and it's sitting slightly to the right of orange. If you sway too much to the left of the indicator, you end up with unnatural orange and yellow tones in the skin and if you sway too far right of the line, you end up with unnatural magenta and purple hues. And if you go to the opposite end, you end up with green skin. Now this doesn't just go for Caucasian skin. All skin types are inherently red in tone and they occupy a remarkably narrow band of hues and saturation when it comes to scopes. All skin is reflective and the pigmentation of someone's skin changes how the light is reflected, but it doesn't change the inherent hue of the skin itself. So with that in mind, healthy skin tones for all skin types need to sit somewhere on this line or slightly to the right of it, depending on the look that you're going for. We'll get more into precisely how to correct and color grade skin tones further into this course, but I wanted to wrap our little theory session up on that note. So yes, that does mean we're now ready to open up Premiere Pro together and take an overview of the tools that we're going to be working with. 
I will make the assumption here that you're relatively familiar with Premiere Pro, and therefore we'll just be focusing on the color section and how to utilize the Lumetri color effect. If you do want to learn more about editing in Premiere Pro, then be sure to check out the links in the description below to some of the great tutorials we have over on the Tuts Plus YouTube channel. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit that little subscribe button. Alrighty, let's jump into the next chapter, which is understanding the tools that we're going to be working with. So like I said just moments ago, I'm going to treat you as if you're relatively familiar with Premiere Pro. I'm not gonna walk you through everything uh, that you need to know to kind of get started or anything like that. Um, but what I will do is we'll walk through the layout of the color tab. So if you do open it up and you find yourself in the editing tab, in version 23 at least of Premiere Pro, which is what I'm currently working in, you just go up to the top right hand side here uh, where the color tab is, and it will bring you into the color section of Premiere Pro. Now on the right hand side here, we've got the Lumetri color tab. Then we've got our program monitor in the middle. Uh, and this is my friend Tom, yet another Tom, working in his little study here. And I thought, you know, I've got to get some footage for this color grading tutorial. And there's a lot of great color in this space and good skin tone as well that we'll be working on. So thanks to Tom for volunteering his face to be part of this tutorial. Uh, on the left hand side here, we've got the Lumetri scopes. And if you don't immediately see these, you might see effects controls or the audio mixer or something like that. Uh, but what you need to do is just click on the scopes there. Down on the left hand side, this is where all our project files are. We've got our timeline in the middle here and, uh, and that's basically the kind of layout of the color tab. But what I'm gonna walk you through now is kind of laying it out for color grading and the way I like to do it. Now this is by no means not the only way to do it, but it's the way that I like to do it. So first off, we mentioned scopes earlier and I said that let's work with the vector scope and the parade. So what we're going to do down on this little symbol here where the settings are for your scopes, we're going to turn off the histogram and we're going to turn off the waveform. So now we've got our vector scope and our parade. Now there are a whole bunch of different presets and different things like that and different color spaces that you can work in over here in the Lumetri scopes area of the color tab in Premiere Pro. Going that deep into color science in this kind of video is maybe not the right avenue we need to take. Uh, what we're going to do today, we're going to work in the RGB space in terms of scopes, and we're working in a Rec. 709 color space. Well, it's defaulted to automatic here, but we will be working in a Rec. 709. For the most part, I'm uploading to YouTube, which is a BT 709 or Rec. 709 color space. I am working on a Mac, so there's some Rec. 709A uh, tagging that needs to be done. But again, if you want to deep dive into color space and color science and things like that, uh, this is maybe not the video for you. So we're going to take an overlook here at how to color grade in Premiere Pro. What I'm going to say, leave it on RGB for now. If you need to dive deeper into learning more about uh, different color spaces and different color sciences, please feel free to do so. And also hit me in the comments if you've got any tips and tricks or great places to learn about color space because it can be really daunting for new people stepping into the color side of the industry uh, to kind of work out uh, what they need to do at the start because it's very scientific and it can get very deep. So now that we've got those two scopes up, what I wanna do is I wanna just move a few things around here because I don't really need, especially for this project, I don't really need to see my timeline the whole time, but what I do want is I want quite a big program monitor. So I'm gonna bring my program monitor just down here next to my timeline so I can still go back and forth between my timeline and my program monitor should I need to. Uh, and then I'm going to move over here, my Lumetri color tab, I'm going to move this up a little bit more so I've got more vision of what I'm working on. Move this across here like so because we don't really need to see our project settings. Uh, and then this way we've kind of got our scopes at the top. So this is really all I need to see. If you do wanna save the workspace that you're working in uh, so that you can easily get back to this preset, you can go up to Window and then go Workspaces and then go Save a New Workspace. So let's do that now. We'll call this TG Color. And now if I go up to Window and I go Workspaces and I go Reset to Save Layout, which is what we were on before, and now if I open up the program and it defaults to this, I can go back, go window, workspaces, go TG color, and it should uh, give me what I need. And again, I just need to click over to the program monitor here and not uh, my timeline. So there we go. That's how you set up the workspace and set a uh, preset so that you can continue working on it next time. So now we're going to take an overview of the Lumetri color effect, um, but we won't actually dive into changing things right now. I'm just going to give you a basically a roadmap of what we're looking at. So you've got basic correction, creative, curves, color wheels and match, HSL secondary, and vignette. We'll start with basic correction. 
basic correction is correction. We've already talked about the difference between correction and color grading. So this is where you would correct your image. This is where I would bring in a correction LUT or I would make corrections to my uh, contrast, highlight shadows, temperature, uh, tint, all those things that you're seeing here. And these are just sliders left or right. So you're plusing or minusing. Creative, this is where you start to dial in your look. So if you've got basic correction, correction, creative is color grading. So this is where you start to dial things in. But it's not necessarily manual color grading. This is where I would be using LUTs to get a look uh, when I've already done my basic correction. And we will go through that very shortly. So this is where you can input the LUTs that you wanna work with. And you can see here, uh, Premiere Pro has a whole bunch of like creative looks already built in uh, to kind of replicate different things like Kodak, uh, Fuji. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things in there. We might have a look at that briefly as well, but you can also bring in your own files as well, which we will be doing. And this is where you can make some slight adjustments to those LUTs, those creative looks that you can add to your corrected footage. In curves here, you've got RGB curves. So uh, this top one here is where you would do a contrast curve, for instance, doing a little S curve would add some contrast to your footage. And you can do that either in your luminance or separate the R, G and B values, and you can do it that way. And then you've got some different options as well that uh, kind of come into play when you want to start tweaking things. So you've got hue versus saturation. So you can pick a hue within the image and you can either saturate it or desaturate it. You've got hue versus hue. So you can pick a hue and shift that hue hue versus luma, uh, where you can pick a hue and increase or decrease the luminance. You've got luma versus saturation, which is where you can pick a, a bright or a dark area of the image, and then you can increase or decrease that saturation. And then finally, we've got saturation versus saturation, which is quite specific, uh, and I kind of need to show you this in situ once we start grading, but basically uh, you can take a saturated part of the image, let's say the green in this image was more saturated than this red, what we can do using the saturation versus saturation curve and looking at our vector scope, we can basically make sure that both the green and the red are equally or, you know, are equally saturated if that's what we want to go for. And this is a way we can start seeing that. Moving on to our color wheels and match. This for me is where I would do my manual grading. So on the left hand sliders here for your shadows, your midtones and your highlights, um, often known as lift, gamma and gain if you're working in something like DaVinci Resolve. On the left-hand slider here is your luminance. If you increase it, you're increasing the luminance of one of these values or decreasing the luminance of one of these values. So in this case, the shadows. And you can just double click these and it sends it back to the middle. Now this color wheel here, if you grab the little uh, crosshair in the middle, you can click that and drag it towards, you know, whatever uh, color value you want on the color wheel. And that will bring the shadows or the midtones or the highlights into that world. And you can see over on our vector scope, the further we go out, the more saturated we're getting as well. Um, and I'm double clicking that to go back into the center. So this is where you can start to do a grade. So we've got a relatively flat image here. If we wanted to just add some contrast into that, you can bring the shadows down. We'll bring our highlights up a little bit and then we'll play with our midtones, adding a little bit of color into here, just briefly like this. And all of a sudden we've got, uh, you know, gone from a desaturated image, a log image, to something that's starting to have a bit of a grade on it. And that was very quick, but don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through that in much more detail uh, as we go. Okay, second to last here, we've got HSL secondary. Now this section is used to change a specific color. So basically, if you wanna color change something in the image, you can do that here. Let's say, again, we wanna use the example of this red, we wanted to change that color. We can use these keying tools to select that color and then change it on the wheel. And we'll do that a little later on when we actually have some more color detail in this image. Finally, you've got vignette and basically this creates a vignette around the image. Negative it and you've got black, positive and you've got white. Uh, and then you can change other things as well like where the midpoint sits, uh, you can change the roundness of the vignette and you can feather that vignette out or in. Uh, so just add a little bit of moodiness to your shot that way. So that's vignette. Uh, let's just reset all of this stuff right now and we'll get into the next section, which is actually starting our color grade. So as I promised earlier, we are going to look at a couple of different versions of color grading our images in Premiere Pro using the Lumetri color effect. And the first way we're going to do that is by starting with a correction LUT. So up in our basic correction section here, we're going to go and find our correction LUT. So for this piece of footage that we'll be working on in this tutorial, I captured this on a Sony FX30 mirrorless camera. 
in S-Log3, which is Sony's log footage uh, kind of proprietary codec. And I shot that with the S-Gamut3 uh, Cine profile, which is a bit of a mouthful, but it does pay to know where the footage that you're working with came from and, and how it was captured. Uh, so for instance, some more information about this shot is that it was captured in 10-bit 422. So it should actually have a bit more depth here uh, for us to actually create this look. So with that information at hand, I'm going to go to my basic correction tab, go to my input LUT, and I'm going to find my camera specific correction LUT. Now, if you click on this drop down here, you've got a few that are baked into Premiere Pro. So if you're working with Alexa, lucky you, <laughs> you've got your uh, Log C to Rec 709 here. Um, you've got some phantom stuff. There's a few bits and pieces here, but if you go into custom, you can add your own. So now you just need to navigate through to where they are on your finder or explorer window. And what we've got here is we've got the S-Log3 S-Gamut3 dot cine to LC709 type A. Now again, we're not going to get too far into the color science side of things, but I'm working on a Mac, so I'm going to be working with the type A LUT. Click OK, and there we go. We've now corrected our footage. Now if I turn this LUT off again, let's just have a look at our scopes. This is a in my opinion, a <laughs> well exposed piece of footage. Now I did shoot it as well. So, uh, you know, I get to say that about my footage. Nothing is overexposed. Our highlights are under our limit here and nothing is underexposed. So I've got plenty of uh, room to play in the shadows. Now it is a little noisy down in the shadows here, but we can correct that up. So turning on our basic correction LUT again, and you can see here what that has essentially done has added contrast and saturation. Turn it off again and we'll look at the scopes. We've gone from a relatively small band. We'll ignore these highlights up here in the 90, but let's look at kind of 70 through to 20. That's most of our image is sitting within 70 and 20. And now if we turn our basic correction LUT back on, we've gone to below 10, which is fine. We don't want to go anywhere below zero and we haven't hit 100 yet. Uh, basically 100 is pure white, zero is black. And if you push your image either above 100 or below black, you start to crush those highlights or shadows. And you're not adding or subtracting anything, you're just deteriorating the image at that point. So that's a pretty good place to start creating a look from because let's be honest, it's a correction LUT. I shot it relatively well uh, and this correction LUT works specifically for this camera. But if we did wanna change some things, like for instance, I captured this at 5600 Kelvin color temperature, but let's say we want the white balance to shift a little bit or we want to do a little bit of an auto white balance. In our white balance section, we can grab the eyedropper tool here and click on our image where we see something that we deem as white. So I would say this part of the frame here is white. And we click that and it is just going to shift our white balance ever so slightly. So I'm happy with that. That's looking good. Now under here, we got our tint and our saturation. So our tint at the moment has, with that white balance, it has adjusted by negative 0.8, slightly towards the green end. Uh, and it is because we've got quite a lot of red in this wood here. We've got a lot of red in the wood of this table. Obviously we've got red in this image here, a lot of red in this skin, and we'll get into the skin shortly. Uh, and the only real green that we're seeing is coming through from a little bit of this green light out in the backyard. I don't think this needs a tint adjustment, so I'm going to leave that. And saturation wise, I'm happy where the saturation has come to for this correction part of the image. We can add more saturation in as we start to create our look. In terms of exposure, again, I'm happy with the exposure, but I think maybe there could be a little bit more contrast. So I'm just gonna dial up the contrast a little bit here. And you can see I'm looking at my scopes. There we go. And I'm looking at the image as well, but importantly, looking at my scopes, and I've pushed that to where I like it, but I can see now those highlights are starting to clip up a little bit, especially in the blue channel. So I'm going to go up to my highlights over here and I'm just gonna bring the highlights down a peak. And I'm gonna grab the whites as well and bring them down from the top. So there we go. If I just turn this little bit off and on, you can see what we've done there. So I'm really happy with that. But what happens if I don't have this correction LUT on hand? Well, let's just go through and we'll reset everything that we've done and we'll get back to this correction uh, in the manual way. So I'm gonna reset. So now the input LUT is not there. What I wanna do first is I wanna kind of add some contrast to this image. So I'm going to grab my contrast. I'm just gonna to start to push this out. I don't wanna to go too hard with the contrast itself because I don't wanna just expand these you know, at a, at a general rate. I wanna, I wanna expand them to a point, but then I wanna start bringing the individual levels down. So we'll start with the blacks here pull them down and then I'm going to bring the shadows down a little bit 
Keep bringing the blacks down. See, now they're just starting to touch here on the bottom, which I don't want, so I'm just gonna drag them back up. And I'm going to do the same now with our highlights and our whites. So I bring the highlights up quite a bit. Remember, we were sitting mostly through 70 and then 20. Uh, let's bring the whites up toward the top. Bring these highlights up a little bit more. Pull the shadows, pull the blacks. And now I'm gonna pull the highlights back down. Drop our contrast just a little bit there. And it is all about finesse, especially when you're doing it manually. So now let's look at our white balance. I can do the automatic eyedropper tool again, and there's no harm in doing the automatic eyedropper tool because it does a very good job. So I'm gonna click in that same white area and we've just shifted the white balance a little bit. But here, I think it probably needs just a little, little bit of magenta. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of magenta in, and now I'm gonna play with the saturation a little bit. So there we go. Think that is looking pretty good to my eye. Let's turn it off and on again. And look, it's not gonna be exactly the same as the correction light, but you've gotten to pretty much the same place without that correction light. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset this and I'm gonna bring the correction light back in, and then we'll start looking at how to add a look using LUTs. So there we are, our correction LUT is back in there. And as you can see, there's a little bit more saturation coming into the image now than when we did it manually, but that's okay. It doesn't matter how you get there, as long as you get to a final image that you're happy with uh, and that is kind of sitting well within your scopes, then, then we're all good. So moving down to the creative section now. So as I mentioned before, this is where you would put your creative looks or creative LUTs and start to adjust those. So you need to have your basic correction done uh, for then this section to work. So what you can do is you can scroll through these here and this is all the inbuilt ones that are in Premiere Pro. So let's just find something that we might wanna use. Let's say this blue steel. The whole image isn't gonna look like this because this is showing a preview of what this LUT would do if you were not already in a corrected space. But if I double click this image now, it's going to apply this LUT over the top of our corrected image. So we double click that and you can see there, we've just got some really beautiful blues in these shadows. And this section up here used to be quite green, but now we've pushed into that kind of yellowy area. So I'm just gonna take this off for a second. And what we wanna do is look at our Lumetri scopes here, uh, up in our vector scope specifically. Have a look at the parade as well, what happens when I turn this back on. We're going to get a little bit more contrast in the parade, but more specifically, what I want you to look at over here is in the vector scope and see just how much the color information in this image shifts when I turn this on. So we've gone from probably yellow and green being the most saturated area and then red, which is sort of all this area through here, turning this on and now we're really far into the blue and we've kind of gone up between yellow and red, somewhere sitting in orange. And I think that is a really, really nice looking image. But let me show you what it looks like if I turn the basic correction off. So we've just got this kind of blue image. And this is really demonstrating to you that creative LUTs and things like that that you can get off, say, Envato Elements, for instance, and I will show you some of those very shortly, they're tools for the job. So you need to know how to use them in conjunction with other tools, like the basic correction LUT. So get your image corrected back to kind of reality, back to this 709 color space, if that's what you're working in, then go ahead and apply your creative LUT. And that's how you get a really nice, beautiful creative image. Now, of course, we can adjust the intensity of this overlay as well, this LUT. So we can go really far and get really moody if we want, which looks a bit too intense, I would say. I would dial it back, less is more. Or we can just basically turn it almost off, just introducing a little bit of it there if we don't want it to be too stylized. And now again, have a look if I go all the way to the left here on the intensity and have a look at the vector scope here as I move all the way to the right, you'll see all that color information just shifting, 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 uh, and then spreading out, basically saturating all the way to orange and all the way to blue for that classic kind of teal and orange look. Uh, so I think that looks really good. You can add some faded film here in these little adjustments. So these are just cosmetic upgrades. I guess everything is cosmetic when, you are, when you're doing color grading work. But faded film just lifts the shadows uh, and gives us that kind of like milkiness in the shadows. Uh, it doesn't change, I guess it does change the overall contrast, but we're not really doing anything to the highlights. We're just kind of lifting those shadows, which is something I guess you would get when you're looking at like film processes or something like that. 
Uh, sharpening, we can add a bit of sharpening to the image here, and that's just pulling out some detail in his face. Uh, vibrance, this is an interesting one. So saturation is going to saturate the entire image. It's gonna take every bit of color information and have a look at our vector scope there and just stretch it out to different saturation levels. Just gonna Command Z to undo what I've just done there. Now have a look at the vector scope when I change the vibrance here. It's not taking everything and just stretching it out. It's picking certain colors and saturating them. Picking colors that are already kind of like saturated in this image, but not taking the overall color and saturating it outwards in a uniform way. So vibrance just adds a little bit of, uh, you know, wow factor, I guess, to the image rather than just overly saturating the entire thing. And you can see that kind of in the walls here. If I saturate, you're just gonna get this yellow glow happening on the walls. But if I shift the vibrance, you're going to get mostly like his skin tone, his shirt, a little bit of this leaf, this kind of you know color that we've got going on, these artworks in the background. Uh, that's what's going to start coming out of this. So that's how you can use those there. So that there is color grading and color correcting with LUTs, but that's the built-in ones that are in Premiere Pro. So let's just reset this here. We're going to go back up to our basic correction. We're going to once again, grab our correction LUT, get that into the space that we're happy with. We're not gonna tweak that any further. Go to our creative. Now, what happens if we wanna bring in some creative LUTs, say from Envato Elements? Well, glad you asked because I've got some ready to go. So in the creative section here, go into your look drop down, go to custom once again, like we did in basic correction, and then just navigate to the looks that you wanna use. So let's just use something from this pack here I got from Invato Elements. I'll have the link in the description down below to this pack and all of the other assets that I've used in this course. Now, if you go into the LUT section here, you can see there's some different options. What you're looking for when it comes to video LUTs uh, in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve or any other programs you're working with are cubes. So they're .cube files. That's what you're looking for. These other LUTs here are for different programs. Uh, you can see here some packs come with Lightroom presets and Photoshop presets and things like that. What we want for video is LUTs and cubes. So let's just pick one. Um, Mordor, how about we do Mordor 3 cube. Hit open and we'll see what that does. There we go. So that's added that there. It's kind of desaturated the image by the looks of it and it's given us a little bit more of a kind of a yellowy glow. And from here, again, we can go down and we can change things like we did before with the vibrance and the saturation and you know a bit of faded film if we wanna go for that look. And I think actually in this image, that kind of looks pretty good. But let's try a different one just for the sake of it. Go up to here, go back to browse again, and we'll go to, um, what have I got here? Vaporware. Let's just get something a little bit crazy. Um, let's try lucky number 17, why not? There we go. So now we've added a whole bunch of kind of pink elements to the uh, walls and stuff here. And his shirt's coming out as a nice, very, very cyan. You can see there, the cyan is really saturated. Uh, but you know, I think this is quite cool dial it down a little bit. And what I would do here, now that we've got this look dialed in, is you can go back to your basic correction and start to kind of pull down some elements. So I felt like it was very, very overexposed when we brought that in. So I'm just gonna bring the whites down, bring the highlights down a bit, uh, play with our contrast. And let's see where we go here. Again, like I said before, it's all about finesse and just kind of getting you into that right spot. So I think that's looking pretty cool, actually. Uh, you can see there we're still pushing into that cyan, but we don't have that big washout that we had earlier. And then we can go back into our creative section and we can play again with our faded film, our vibrance, get a little bit of sharpening up there. And then we can play with the tint balance as well. So if what we've got here is a lot of cyan in the shadows, what we can do is we can push the shadows to cyan to push that even more. Let's just go down to something like this. And then our highlight, you know, usually you want to do opposite. So that's why teal and orange works really well. So if you've got cyan here, the opposite of that is red. So let's push the highlights towards red. And we'll go a little bit more to that kind of ready orange side of things. And now we can shift the tint balance as well. So we can shift between the red of the highlights and the blue of the shadows. So let's find a happy medium there. And I think something like that looks pretty good. So we've gone from this, our log image, to this. But, you know, in between, we've gone from our log image to our basic correction, uh, which we've done some toggling, uh, and then we've added our creative light from Envato Elements to give ourselves this kind of really nice teal and magenta and red look. It just kind of adds a whole different dimension to this image, makes some things like his shirt pop. Uh, 
What I don't like what it's doing is that outside area, but again, color grading is all a bit subjective. You, as long as you're kind of looking at your scopes and you're not pushing things in too crazy a direction, uh, then you've got some room to move. So this has been color correcting and color grading with LUTs, but how do we do this manually in Premiere Pro? Let's throw out the LUTs, we won't use them at all. We wanna start from a log image and create a look all by ourselves, just using the tools that are available here in the Lumetri color effect. Well, that's in the next chapter, so let's move on to it. So I've reset our image back to zero here, and we're going to start again. So instead of basic correction or creative, I'm going to first go to my color wheels and match. Now, there's different schools of thought with this. Some people like to start in curves. They like to add a little bit of a contrast S-curve here by grabbing the highlights and the shadows, adding a little contrast curve here and a contrast curve like that, playing around with this until they kind of get somewhere that they like, and you know, using this as a starting point. And this is totally okay, but to be honest, this isn't the way that I like to work. So I like to use the RGB curves as kind of tweaks rather than as my basis of a grade. So this is not how I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm gonna show you my way of doing it. So instead of curves, I'm going to go into color wheels and match. And now this has everything I need to get started in a grade and actually start to push the grade in a nice creative way. So you've got your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. And like I said before, the luminance slider on the left and then your color wheel in the middle here. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna grab my shadows and I'm gonna bring my shadows down, just get them somewhere towards the bottom. And I'm looking mainly here at the parade. So just trying to get these shadows just somewhere down towards zero, but again, being very careful not to hit that zero bar. Then I'm gonna take my highlights and I'm gonna take them all the way up and I'm gonna extend them out until they hit almost 100. We don't want them to actually hit 100. So now that's basically my contrast range. Again, we were looking before at this image when it was corrected with our correction LUT and that was between 70 and 20. Most of the image was sitting between there. That's sort of where we are now. But I actually think it needs our midtones to come up a little bit. So I'm gonna bring our midtones up which means we're losing contrast, but now I can bring our shadows back down and create a bit more drama in the shadows here. I'm gonna bring our highlights down a bit just to adjust. There we go, and I think that's looking all right in terms of our contrast. Now what I do wanna do is I wanna add a little bit of color into our shadows, our midtones, and our highlights. What I'm gonna mostly look at is his skin in this part. So, I'm going to bring just a little bit of blue into our shadows here. There's already a bit of blue with his shirt and things like that. I've got a bit of blue over here. Midtones, I'm going to push slightly towards orange and then our highlights, I'm going to push up towards the red. Now, we don't have a lot of saturation in here yet. It's, it's saturating over into our yellows and our greens, mostly because of this section here, uh, but we really don't have a lot of saturation in the rest of the image. So how can we do that? Well, this is where we go back up to our basic correction. So from here, I'm just gonna to start to increase the saturation a little bit. And we can see here that's starting to increase out on our vector scope. So I don't wanna to go too far. I'll go around here and then I'll start to pull it back. And I'm going to just change our temperature as well. I think we're looking a little warm. So I'm gonna go on the cooler side and I'm gonna add in, I think just by eye here, yeah, just a little bit of magenta. So that's looking pretty good to me there. I'll make a few more adjustments just in this section. So I'm gonna bring my highlights up a little bit and then I'm gonna bring my shadows down just to add a bit more contrast in these mid-tone areas. Uh, and then what are we doing? I'll just pull the whites down a little bit and just playing with the shadows. I don't wanna to lose too much in the bottom half here. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to go back to our curves. So like I said before, I like to make little tweaks. So I've already kind of got to a nice place, but I wanna make tweaks now. So I'm going to add just a little bit more contrast in here, just by grabbing this and making a bit of an S curve. I wanna to start to crush the blacks a little bit in the bottom here. And then let's see where these highlights come in, probably around, just around about here, that's nice. So we're, we've got the highlights coming in, but really I just want the highlights on his face to be the ones that we're kind of looking at. And that's what you're seeing here in the image. So now I wanna look at our hue versus our saturation. 
What I can see here over on the vector scope is that this yellow and green is really popping over here and I actually want it to be a little bit less poppy. So I'm going to select the hue and then I'm going to desaturate it. And the way I do that is on the hue versus saturation curve, I'll grab the eyedropper here. I will grab the eyedropper over the green and that's created uh, three little keyframes. So basically I can grab the middle keyframe, which is the one that's identified. And then these are the outer limits. I can grab the middle keyframe and I'll bring it down to desaturate it. So I'll just go all the way down. So you can see there, I've basically taken all the color out of this image here, or sorry, this part of the image. And if I push it all the other way, I've just absolutely cranked the saturation, which you can see up here. But what I want it to sit is at basically the same kind of saturation that we've got going on with the rest of the color. So it's around about here. So I'm gonna grab that, looking at the vector scope, uh, there's a little bit of an input delay. So we'll just go slowly and something around that looks pretty good to me. I'm also now looking at the image as well, making sure that it doesn't look too out of place. So I'm gonna turn this off and on so you can see. So that was with it saturated, and this is with it just desaturated a little bit. And I think that now matches the rest of what we've got going on here. So that was the first thing that was kind of bothering me about the color in the image. Now, what I really like about this image is that he's very well lit compared to the background and all those kind of things. So what I wanna do is I wanna kind of grab his skin tone and just raise it a little bit in terms of the luminance. So what I'm gonna do is grab the eyedropper tool on the hue versus luma curve, and I'm just gonna hover that over and then click on his temple here. And as you can see, that's added a keyframe over the red section here. Like I mentioned before, a lot of red in skin. Uh, and we can just raise that just a little bit. If I go down, you'll see there we're you know, putting him into shadow and this is where the image starts to degrade. If we go too high, the image is degrading as well. So I'm just going up ever so slightly there and I'll turn that off and on to see what we're working with. All I've done is just separated him from the background just a little bit and it is bringing up the table and stuff as well. But because that background behind his head is a different hue, we can now grab the eyedropper tool and maybe select something like here. And you can see that's added this new one here. I'll just bring that down slightly. And now we've made him really pop out from the background. And it's very subtle. We're, we're working with subtle changes now. So that's kind of where I wanna to get to in terms of the color of the image here. So if I go up to my curves and I turn this off and on, again, we haven't done a huge amount in this section. We've just added a little bit more color detail to the image and changed our contrast just a bit. So now I'm going back to where I started, which is the color wheels and match section. And what I wanna start doing here is really add that color and drama to the image. So I'm going to play again with our shadows, our midterns and our highlights, and I'm gonna just add more color into these. So I'm gonna pull more blue into our shadows here. And we'll go again, trying to replicate what we did before, that bit of that kind of teal and orangey look. Uh, we'll bring more blue into the shadows like I've just done. We'll push more orange into the highlights. And again, we'll just push this around in our highlights here. Sorry, that was uh, mid-tones before. Now we're working with the highlights. And let's see where we can get to with this. Again, just playing, seeing what comes to taste here. So I think that's starting to look somewhat in the realm of where I want it to. Yeah, it's looking good. It's looking nice and moody here. And we are just gonna change the skin a little bit in a moment as well. Finally, before we change the skin, I'm going to add just a little bit of a vignette basically just to again draw our attention to him. I don't wanna to go too hard on this, so I'm just gonna play around with it and then pull it back a little bit, somewhere around about there. And this is my off and on, off and on. So that's looking good. Now finally, I'm gonna to go to HSL secondary, and this is where we're going to start to grab his skin tone and make sure we're correcting for that. So I'm gonna use the little eyedropper tool here to set the color, and I'm going to pick his skin tone, which is on his temple here. And now if I go to color gray, if I check this box here, we're going to see just that tone that I've picked. And this is where we can use these sliders to make sure that we're actually picking his skin tone and not like all the walls and things like that around it. So let's just adjust these. So we're just getting his skin tone, but trying not to get the wall around it. We may have to do a little bit of widening of these. So that's kind of got his skin tone there, getting a little bit of his arm, his neck, his face. And now we can denoise this a bit as well. So if I denoise this and blur it out, that's gonna do wonders for us. And now what I wanna do is I wanna just 
play around with uh, our sliders here just to bring in the kind of color that we want to see in his skin. And again, I'm looking over at our skin tone indicator here on our vector scope. You can see that skin tone line. Like we said before, we want it to be on or just to the right of the line. So I'm kind of playing with the temperature here. Just playing with the tint a little bit, pushing that over towards the magenta. And in our correction, I wanna move this to a three bar here because skin has quite a bit of blue in the shadows. So I'm gonna bring just a bit of blue into that and bring some orange into the midtones. And you can see, again, having a look at our vector scope, we're on that line now, and then bringing a bit of red into the highlights and we'll see where that lands. See, it's on or just slightly to the right of our skin tone indicator. Now, if I turn off this color check button, you can see here, if I turn off and on HSL secondary, you can see now his skin just kind of pops compared to the rest of the image. And I'm really happy with that. I think it really pops, but we've got a nice natural skin tone. So there we go. That is our footage corrected and graded from scratch in Premiere Pro using the Lumetri color tab. Let's say we're really happy with where we've got to right now. How do we replicate that across our other images that we've got in the timeline like so? Well, it's relatively simple. We could just copy and paste the effect over if we wanted to, if we go up to our effects controls. Uh, let's go back to our editing tab so we can see this more clearly. If we select the piece of footage that we've been working on and then go into our effects controls here, hit Lumetri Color, hit Command C, go over to our other image, click into our effects controls, hit Command V, and there we go, we've just pasted that Lumetri effect. And you can see here, that has done a pretty good job at color grading our footage because it was shot in the same conditions, it's using the same color, it's using the same light, and we'll play it through and it looks nice and clean, nice and consistent. Uh, this one here is a little bit more moody, you know, probably slightly different lighting conditions, but we can tweak those and we can actually match them. So that's the easy way of copying the Lumetri color effect over to another piece of footage. And before I show you how to match these two in Premiere, I'll quickly show you how you can export that as a LUT. So I'll just go up to our original piece and I'll go back into our color tab. I'll go up to our Lumetri color effect up here and I'll hit the little hamburger menu and I'll come down to export.cube. So there we go. Now we can go export.cube and I'm just going to bring it into our LUT section here and go TG LUT and we go save and that's there. Now if we went back over in here and we reset this, we can go into our basic correction, go import LUT, browse, find out TG LUT and there we go, all of that color information has now been added to our image, which I'm really happy about. It's really simple and really easy to do. But how do we match these images like I said before? Well, if you go down to color wheels and match, we've only looked at color wheels so far, but what does the match mean? Well, if you go to comparison view and click that, it's now going to take the two pieces of footage that you've got on your timeline here, or you can move through your timeline like so and find the other piece that you wanna match if you had multiple pieces. So this little scroll bar here is basically saying what piece on the timeline you wanna look at, uh, what you wanna reference, sorry, and then what piece you wanna change. So we're clicking on here because we want to change this one and we want to reference the piece that we already did before, which is this. So how does this work in terms of our scopes? Well, let's go up and we'll change our view again like we did earlier, workspace and TG color. Now it's a bit hard to see, but we are actually looking at two scopes on one scope here. So if you look at the parade and I go up to basic correction, now remember we're correcting this piece of footage and we're referencing this. If I just change the exposure all the way up on this one to demonstrate, you can see here that this is actually splitting the red, green, and blue values up into two separate images. So on the left-hand side, I've got this piece of footage that I'm referencing. And then on the right-hand side, I've got this piece of footage here. As you can see, I've cranked the exposure just to show this. So if I reset that exposure, now you can see if I make slight changes here, you can see that we're reflecting that over here on our scope. So that's how we can use these to match. So what we need to do is we need to analyze the reference frame here and then we need to make those changes over on our current frame. I'm gonna go back into my old friend color wheels and match, which is what we're looking at in comparison view. That's how you get to this. But we wanna go and play with the shadows, the midtones and the highlights. 
and basically just try and even these out on the scopes. So first of all, I'm gonna tackle the shadows. So just grabbing the shadows slider here and starting to bring that down. So I'm looking at a combination of our scopes and our program monitor here. And now we wanna look back at our highlights, uh, sorry, our midtones, and we wanna bring those back up into this kind of like 60 range. And then we wanna to go to our highlights and kind of even those out as well. So let's bring those up a little bit. And it will be different here because we do have that daylight coming through the window in our reference, which is this really high area here. But what I'm really looking at is kind of our uh, middle section here, which is this bit of light that's bouncing off Tom's forehead. So that's gotten us somewhat into the realm of similarity. And I think we can probably just go a little bit further with our shadows. And if anything, we can add another little vignette as well, just to really bring that in because it's come across with our uh, LUT, but it hasn't really come across as intense as we want it to. So now I would say they're looking pretty similar, but if you do really want to check this out, you can hit this middle button here, which is vertical split. And now you've got the ability to basically wipe the two frames together. And you can see there, we're pretty much bang on. I'm, I'm happy with that. And it doesn't have to be exactly, exactly the same because remember, this is going to show up in a timeline view. So if we go up to our editing section and we play these two pieces of footage back to back, let's just play it through. And I'll turn off our comparison view here. So you can just click that button here, going back to our regular program monitor. Play this through. That looks like it matches really well. So I'm really happy with that. But going back into our color tab, the keen-eyed viewers amongst you might have noticed that in our color wheels and match, when I go to comparison view, I also get this little apply match button underneath. So let's investigate what that is. So let's click over to this piece of footage here. I've taken the uh, LUT off it, so we're back to our log footage, and we're gonna reference this image and we wanna basically apply a match to this current image. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna click apply match and we'll see what happens. And there you go, it's done a pretty good job. But in my honest opinion, I think we did a better job uh, kind of manually matching these two together. You can see here, the vibrance of the shirt isn't that good. Uh, you know, the skin tone is really good. And obviously the face detection there is basically looking at the faces in both and trying to match those. So you can use this, see how you go with the apply match using a little bit of fun AI stuff that's happening underneath the hood in Premiere Pro. But uh, to be very honest, I prefer to do it the manual way because I think, yeah, we got into a much better spot there. All right, moving on from that. All right, so we're pretty much at the end of the tutorial here, but I really wanna just leave you with a couple of extra little tips and tricks about color grading in Premiere Pro. Now, what I've been doing so far is color grading on the specific pieces of footage that I'm working with. So let me just delete these uh, Lumetri color effects from these pieces of footage. So we're now back down to where we are. And remember, these are basically exactly the same in terms of our uh, exposure and our color. We had to do a little bit of tweaking, which we just saw in the comparison view. But if you do have a whole bunch of footage like this that's from the same camera, it's exposed pretty well, you can do a adjustment layer grade. So right clicking over here in the project panel, go new item and go adjustment layer. And you'll just click okay. It'll basically make it the same size as your timeline if you set it to default like this. So that will come in here and you can pull this over the top. Now make sure that it's sitting uh, directly over the top of both of your pieces of footage. And at the moment, nothing's happened. But all you need to do is you need to click on that adjustment layer and then go up to color. Then go into our basic correction like we did before and go input LUT, go browse, and let's bring in our TG LUT that we made before, hit okay, and we'll go back to our editing. And now you can see that that color grade has been brought across both of our pieces of footage here, and it's actually on our adjustment layer. So when we turn that adjustment layer off and on, there we go, that's our color grade. So if you had a whole bunch of footage in this timeline here, really easy to just grab this adjustment layer uh, and drag that over the pieces of footage that you want this color grade to appear on. And now look, the last little piece of advice I'll give you, because I know everyone wants to get that cinematic look and they wanna get those black bars uh, to bring things into a, I guess, more traditional, quote unquote, cinematic widescreen aspect ratio. And if you do wanna learn more about aspect ratios, uh, there'll be a little video link popping up right now. I made a really fun, 
deep dive into the history of the aspect ratio recently on the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel. Uh, I'm a big film nerd. I love nerding out on this kind of stuff. Um, so go and have a watch of that video to learn more about the fascinating history of the aspect ratio. But if we do want to get a cheap and quick cinematic look to our 16 by 9 footage here, what we can do is really simple. We can just create a couple of black bars at the top and bottom of our screen. And you can do that by just going new item, color mat, and then cropping that to fit. But how do we know that we're getting the right aspect? Well, if we go new item and go sequence first, then we can create a sequence in here that's the right aspect ratio that we want to go for, and then kind of retrofit that within uh, our timeline using those color mats. So if we want, say, a 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio, that's 3840 by 1634. So let's go 3840 by 1634. And you can see here that's come up as 1920 by 817. But let me assure you it's a 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio. So I'm going to hit OK. Actually, first of all, I'm going to call this sequence a 2.35 uh, and hit OK. Now in this sequence, I want to right click and go new item and go color mat and we'll hit OK. And I'm gonna make this bright red. And hit OK here. We'll bring that color mat in here. And then if I zoom out here, let's go like 25% so you can see the aspect ratio that we're working with. I should be able to copy this, Command C, go back into our Tom working, click into our timeline here, click Command V and paste that in. And now you can see we've got this lovely uh, overlay, which is the right aspect ratio that we're going for. But how do we invert that? How do we get those black bars? Well, again, like I said, it's a little bit of toing and froing, but we're going to right click, go new item, go color mat, and this time we're going to make a black one. And let's call this uh, top bar. We're gonna drag top bar in over the top, and then over in our effects tab here, we're going to search for a crop. We're going to add that onto our top bar, and then we're going to crop the bottom of this until it hits our little aspect ratio guide there. Now I'm going to go back into our project. I'm going to copy the top bar, paste it, and I'm gonna call this bottom bar, bottom bar, and then we'll move this into our timeline and I'm gonna order them so that top bar is above bottom bar. Uh, I'm going to click on top bar, click crop, add that into our bottom bar, and then grab our bottom bar and move that all the way down so it matches right at the bottom of the screen there. Delete our color mat and then add that over the top. And now, Bob's your uncle, we've got 235 to one aspect ratio bars on our 16 by nine footage. So there we go, we've got our nice cinematic look here. We've got our color grade that we did in Premiere Pro in the Lumetri color tab. We've got that sitting on an adjustment layer and we've got our top and bottom bars to simulate the 2.35 to one aspect ratio footage sitting within a 16 by nine frame. Now you could also bring the footage into a 2.35 to one uh, aspect ratio timeline like we've already created, but this way you get complete control over it. So let's say for instance, you wanted just this first shot to have uh, you know, the cinematic bars on it. Let's say this was your B-roll. Then you wanted to go into say like interview footage that didn't have the 2.35 to one bars on it. You could very easily do that all within one timeline there. You've got your cinematic B-roll and then you've got your 16 by nine interview for instance. Anyway, a couple of tips and tricks there at the end of our everything you need to know about color grading in the Lumetri color tab in Premiere Pro tutorial right here on Envato Tuts Plus. So there we go. I think that's everything I could possibly think of that you need to know when it comes to color correcting and color grading in Premiere Pro. I'm really glad you took this course with me and I really hope you got something out of it. Of course, if you do want to let me know down in the comments if there's something that you think maybe I missed out or there's something else that you want to learn, I'm all ears. If you do want to learn a little bit more about Envato Elements, make sure to click that link in the description below. And lastly, but not least, get subscribed to the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel right now because we're putting out great free content like this daily. Okay, until next time, happy color grading.